Welcome back to the card pool. I'm your host, Stu. And I'm Kyle. It has been a while, but we are back. We are back, and the water's still feeling just fine. <laughs> and today we're going to be doing a quick little magic moment looking at the core set 21, M21. Yes, and this is the one that is just around the corner now from being released, and I'm sure you've all been looking at the spoilers very closely, just like we have. Pretty awesome stuff here, but we wanted to take a moment, a magic moment, as it were, to take a look at this set, highlight uh, our top four cards cards each just for no no real order or rhyme or reason to them this time but uh just I wanted to talk reason. about just wanted to talk about them and uh yeah show you what's up with this new set yeah so these are gonna be four cards we like for whatever reason like kyle said and we're just gonna fly right into it so at my number four we have a very unique card called idol of endurance now this is a three drop artifact it costs two generic and it's in white we're actually seeing a little bit more colored artifacts again from wizards which is great this is a rare from the new set and it reads when this card enters the battlefield, exile all creature cards with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard until this card leaves the battlefield. And secondly, you can go ahead and tap two mana, one generic and this, and until the end of the turn, you may cast one of those creature spells uh, that are exiled by this without paying its mana cost. So the reason I like this card, it's kind of like a smaller version of Sun Titan. And I enjoy my Sun Titan mm -hmm. a lot, and this is really good for the fact where it can be used without having to go with conditional stuff like attack steps. You can play this card, and if you have enough mana out, you can just go ahead and get this. But another thing I really do like, and I tip my hat off to you, Wizards, for this, is that it doesn't exile all creatures in the grave. It's only ones that this cares about, because if it hit all creatures in the grave, that might feel real bad. Like, okay, I have a Karmic Guide there, and I can't use it. Well, all right now it's still there you can still use it and it gives it a little bit more functionality and i i'm excited to use this card i have a couple decks i can't wait to call it home yeah this is really interesting it actually reminds me more of a mimic vat than a sun titan because mimic vat similarly you know exiles cards from your graveyard you can make tokens of that card and then you can choose a new one and the other one goes back to your graveyard the key points about this card that make it very good are one when it enters the battlefield and it exiles the creatures, then if it goes away, those creatures go back to the graveyard. It doesn't punish you for exiling like your entire graveyard or however many cards, because when this goes away, they'll just go right back, and hey, you can replay this again somehow, and you can just do it all over again. The other cool thing about it is that originally when I read the card, I was like, oh, well, this is okay, but not great, because, oh, I gotta tap two mana and tap this thing, and then have to cast the pay the mana cost, cast the card all over again. I didn't read the part where it says you cast it for free. Yeah. I was like, so basically anything a one through three drop becomes two mana to cast, and I was like, oh wow, okay. Yeah, that's pretty good then. It's <laughs> discounted on your three drops, which is great. I mean, this can work in like a variety of things that like a kind of dredgish kind of theme, like uh, Gave, which is like in this color which you would want to go ahead and use this with. Black, white, Orzhov, that would be great with this as well. And Boros, too. Boros is the king of using small, aggressive creatures. And the fact that we have something like this now that can recur some of those creatures later in the game, and for such a low price, and for basically no downside at all, for as far as I can tell. No, because if this yeah, thing dies, they all go back, which is great. It's not like, oh, I, I hose my grave, and then if they spot remove this, it's still gone. Yeah. Like, like there is no true minus with it. Like, this might not be what you want for an Alesha deck, just for the fact that you need to keep yeah, stuff nah, in the grave for it. Yeah, it's not efficient enough for that. But for, like, something else, it, it would be good recurability, and I like it. it, it it's like kind of like a too. discounted Sun Titan. Like, play Sun Titan, get this out, get more creatures out, then use this effect, and then keep compoing with Sun Titan and mm -hmm. other stuff. I think that's fun. But either way, you're Sign number four. Sign me up for this. This is... Nice. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Well, on your number four, Kyle, what we got coming out? All right. Us? Well, this one is a little bit more narrow. might seem a bit more boring, but it's called Lanoir Visionary. And this is a three-drop elf druid, which is a 2-2. Two -two. And again, when Lanoir Visionary enters the battlefield, you draw a card, and it can tap to give you one green. So, again, this seems kind of boring compared to the last card we talked about. Why am I so excited about this? Because... I think that, it, as with the last card, we're seeing white and maybe some like variations of white decks get a little bit better at recurring their cards. I think this also shows that green is getting better at drawing cards. Definitely. And that's something we've seen as a trend over the last like year or two. They're really trying to make a push to give green, and to a certain extent white and, and red as well, more card advantage, more solid sources of card advantage. And this is just one more example of that. And hey, 
having an elf, you know, three, th a three drop two two that draws you a card is pretty good regardless. Oh, and it taps for mana too? It's just icing on the cake as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it makes it so it's better in the late game. Like, sure, you want your mana dorks out early, but if you get them late, well, I don't really care about the mana. It's just a body on the field that's a chump blocker. Well, the drawing the card is nice. But also, to note, it is an elf, but it exactly. is a, a druid, which is also very key, because there are certain decks that care about druids and druid count. And this is now a new druid that those decks have arsenal with. And most of the older druids... They aren't anything too amazing. Now, there are some really strong ones out there, but having another one out there that can go ahead, be a mana dork, and draw you cards, and also count as a druid is pretty nice. And, yeah, I, nothing really horrible about this card, Mice. No, maybe we'll see some druid tribal being a thing at some point, but for now, it's another mana elf that draws you a card and adds to your count for those early game elf ball ramps with Lanoir Elves, Priest of Titania, into this. Classic. Can't go wrong. Yeah, can't go wrong. So on to my number three. Now this is probably one of the most grotesque pictures we've seen in Magic in a while, <laughs> yeah. but it is called Peer into the Abyss. Now this is a seven drop sorcery. It's for generic and triple black for another rare card from the set. And it reads target player draws cards equal to the half of the number of cards in their library. Mm -hmm. And also they go ahead and lose half of their life. And this is rounded up for each instance. So it's reverse traumatize. That's mm. interesting. Well, see, the thing is that I really like about this is it's not exactly like milling because it's it's drawing. Well, it sort of is, you know, yeah. it can it can be used in the same decks. It can be. But also the thing is that's so great about it is it is target player, like you said, yeah. yeah. Being able to make it so like if you're really hurting and you need an answer or you need that combo piece or some card out there to go ahead and hose the game, sure, I'll lose half my life. Now, it's not a finite number. It's not losing 20 life or paying like 50 life or something like that like we see with an Aether Flux Reservoir. This is just half. Half a 10, you still are alive, and that's pretty good. You'll be a little bit scared, but using this on your opponents, actually, is also what is really, really interesting mm. about this, because there are decks out there that like to punish people for drawing cards. Like, we see Nekusar out there, and, I mean, this is just pure gas for Nekusar right there. Hey, you pay half your life, and then also if he's out there, that also kills you. That feels pretty right. nice. This is an easy way to close out the game. But you can also go ahead and make it just so it's loss of life on players. Because, like, we see the new NAR set out there from um, the War of the Spark one. Yeah. Where players can't draw more than one card on their t on pretty much every turn. So if you go ahead, you play this, they just go ahead, they draw a card and pay half their life. They're not happy. And, and even though this hmm. has seven mana for going on with this... You can use Cabal Coffers and Magus of the Coffers and all those oh, other cards. For, so it's yeah. not impossible to get that mana quick and black. And it's very, well, unique. Well, it seems similar to Necropotence in a lot of ways because you can just draw, you know, you can draw the vast majority of your deck by paying a probably similar amount of life. And, like, would I rather play Necropotence in this card? Yeah, probably. But still, the fact that this can uh, potentially hurt other people as well as help you makes it somewhat maybe more interesting and anyway if we're really if we're comparing any card to necropotence it's probably already yeah, pretty it's good probably already so, pretty good so for seven mana potentially you know killing somebody yeah sure why not yeah and, and also I, it's it's interesting like i said i think it's reverse traumatized it, it, it'll be useful in nil decks because that's basically making somebody draw half their deck is basically like making them mill half their deck because they're gonna have to get rid of it then well so. back to your necropotence point you actually draw more cards with this per life it's like it's more bang for your buck you draw more cards than you would with necropotence like this yes but, but necropotence can divvy it up which is why it's much more useful and you can use it to sooner in the game and stuff yeah. like that but yeah totally different card out there i know it's not a huge like expensive card it's definitely a budget one most people probably think it as a bulk rare but it is a breakable card and that's why i really do like it well i agree and i liked it so much that my next card is actually a black card as well oh, <laughs> ironic so let's go along with we the do not here. plan this actually which is no, very we funny don't. <laughs> but this one next to number three here is liliana standard bearer so this is a again three drop creature this time it's a zombie knight with a three one body has flash which is a little odd we're seeing that more on black creatures and creatures that are not blue nowadays yeah but when liliana's standard bearer enters the battlefield draw x cards where x is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn so this is kind of similar to things that we've actually seen in green relatively recently remember caller of the claw the, yeah. car, the creature that gives you bears for every creature that died this turn and has flash. 
This is what kind of what that reminds me of, except obviously green likes the protection against board wipes, that little insurance there. Black, however, loves not only getting board wipe, but also sacrificing its own creatures exactly. for value. And now on top of that, you have this thing where it comes in and it can either clean up after a board wipe and draw you a bunch of cards, or it can be another cog in your sacrifice draw engine. So really, Zombie Knight too, two extremely good creature types. And especially knights, I love the fact that they're printing more they're, good Yeah, knights. they're getting more support, which ha, they desperately good need knights. It. But, uh... <laughs> good knights. Yeah, but so this is obviously, like, right in, in the wheelhouse of what black needs and wants and is, yeah, it's just so good. It, the flash, too, though, that's just so interesting. We've seen more black flash cards recently. Yeah, well, I, again, we are seeing a slight expanse on the color pie. Like, sure, mm -hmm. we've seen blue draw cards, we've seen black kill cards, we've seen green get lands, and we've seen white blow up the field and red like <laughs> goblins and destroying <laughs> lands. So, like, it's it's refreshing to kind of break stuff out a little bit here and there, and especially in core sets or, like, the planar mm -hmm. chaos kind of sets. But, uh... Pretty much you said everything on here that I was thinking for. If you were going ahead and sacking, like using a sack outlet like crazy, if you're not winning already, this should be able to go ahead and make it so you get all the advantage you want. This is a little bit more of a win more card for that. But unlike a win more card, this is good in bad scenarios as well. Somebody goes ahead and takes your board state like you mm -hmm. were saying. And yeah, the typical creature I always think of is the one that manifests. Like pretty much every time a creature you, yeah. uh, what is it, Whisper Wood Whisper Elemental? Whisper Wood Elemental, yeah, yeah. So this is kind of like that, but again, it's drawing cards instead. Yeah, and the, the most interesting part is that uh, it's draw cards, and it doesn't go along with what black usually does, which is when you draw cards, you also lose that much life. This is a different... It's just thing. draw cards, so I'm like, hey... Less well, I have to pay for it. Technically, cool. it's, it's sacrificing the creature to it, which we do see. And also, I read this card wrong. I always thought it kept saying Stranded Bearer, so now i <laughs> got to start saying it the right name. But moving on to my number two. Yeah. Number two for Stu. Got to love saying that. <laughs> uh, Chromatic Orrery. Now, this is a legendary artifact that is seven generic. And pretty much what it does is you can go ahead and spend mana, though, or any color. This thing can go ahead and tap to produce five diamond mana, which is any color pretty much at this point when you go ahead and use that effect and for five mana you can go ahead and tap this as well to draw a card for each color among permanents you have so if you have five different colored permanents out there you're drawing five cards for five mana and that's a pretty efficient draw level equivalency right there yeah look up there up in the sky is it a bird is it a plane? No, it's Super Lantern. Da, da, da. <laughs> uh, it's, it's Super Chromatic Lantern. That's basically what this card uh, is. To a degree. I, I'll give you that a little bit. But, before, all right, so I'm. I, this is the card pretty much I didn't know I wanted. And this is it's so good for what it really does here because pretty much it fixes all your mana. And for five and four color decks, typically anything that fixes your mana is not a cheap card. Like Chromatic Lantern, like sure, it's low on the mm. mana, but it's a high dollar card. And they're only going to keep reprinting stuff over and over again to keep that cost down. So finally they started printing new cards, which yeah. we can use. And this this uh, the seven mana is kind of a high price tag for this card. And it's also legendary, so you can't like abuse multiple copies of it or yeah. anything. So, uh, however, the fact that it just goes ahead and taps for, you know, the for Skittles, as Pretty we much, like to call uh, yeah, it, it's Skittles. On, its, on its own. Uberg to everyone else yeah, out in the community, but it for, should be Skittles. Yeah, taps for five of any color on its own. I feel like that that makes it essentially a two mana card. You know what I mean? Because it pays for itself. You need to have so, the, the front for that cost. Yes, but, yeah. but then it makes up for itself almost immediately. So that, that kind of return on investment is really nice. And then, as if that weren't enough, the the drawing is just icing on the cake. Like, come on. Well, also, so it's tutorable by being an artifact. It's tutorable by being a high cost and artifact legendary. and a legendary. And this can be cheated into play by, or by via discarding it to the graveyard, mm -hmm. cheating it out with like a goblin welder like shenanigans. Yeah, you can do all kinds of broken things with artifacts, and this is no exception. Yeah, match uh, transmuter. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that master pretty much transmuter, master yeah. transmuter. Go ahead and bounce it. So this mm -hmm. can t go really well with that. And also, this is really good for decks that like to steal stuff because you don't get the ability to really like you can't play lands that aren't of your colors, right? Right. And you can't use like 
mana rocks that can't produce stuff outside your colors unless it's like a Feldwar stone or something like that. It can't have some sort of color in there. So this is a way to pretty much make it so like if you're using a Centriplet deck, which cares about artifacts, it cares about stealing stuff. I knew you were going to bring that like, up. Like <laughs> it's a great example of that. And I mean also Marik Rebrit, who is like a commander that's in the same colors, it likes to steal people's stuff. Sometimes they have effects that you need to be able to go ahead and exactly. use or you want to use. So this is something that kind of like fits into any kind of steel like permanence deck and yeah i really like it i'm yeah, i'm 100 cool. getting at it's least one it's pretty cool i'll yeah i'll admit it like am i gonna use it i don't know but i love the fact that this is now a thing <laughs> also the one thing yeah. i really do love it's like i keep thinking like all right you play this you tap the five then you go ahead and play gilded lotus you go mm. ahead you tap the gilded lotus play some other rock how much mana did you just net right there <laughs> it's it's kind of like sickening but Either way, I'll, I'll digress on that. But on to your number two, Kyle. What do you got? All right. Well, moving right along, my number two here is going to be one of the new legendary creatures we have in this set. Subira Tulzidi Caravaner. I think that's how you pronounce this whole thing. It sounds like I a don't delicious know pasta sure. dish right there. <laughs> but it is another three-drop creature, a 2-3 with haste, and it's a human shaman. So it has two abilities. It's for one generic, another target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. And then for a generic and a red to tap this creature, you discard your hand, and until the end of the turn, whenever a creature you control with power two or less deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So, this I had to pick, because out of all the legends in, in this set, honestly, this was like the only one that really stood out to me in terms of commander. But uh, it's, it's viable. this one, it's hundred percent viable. Is, this one seems like something that is just waiting to be broken. Historically, Red has had tons of problems with drawing cards reliably. And yes, I know there are wheels, but that's a whole other story. But when you look at what things Red is good at, also. Let's consider it. What is red really, really good at? Swarming with small creatures, being aggressive, yeah. and making tokens a lot of the time. If you're not taking especially, the dragon route. Right, especially those goblins that we talked about earlier. So the problem, though, is that if you're swinging with a bunch of tokens, they quickly get outclassed over the course of the game. Very and much so. bigger creatures will start chump blocking them, and since red doesn't really have any way to recoup those things generally, you'll lose your army and have nothing left. This takes care of both problems at the same time which is it saves your small creatures by making them unblockable so you don't have to worry about losing them to combat. And then also for everyone that manages to get in for damage, hey, I'm going to give you a new card in your hand. Odds are you're probably not going to have that many in your hand anyway, so discarding your hand is really no big deal. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I like this card a lot for that. And honestly, it reminded me a lot of uh, Alesha and uh, Tetsuko. A yeah, little bit. I think both of, well, not Tetsuko because it's not in the same colors, but both of uh, Alesha style. will definitely benefit from this card. And th another we've only tool. seen like another card that's similar <laughs> to this one. It's uh, the one new Neheb, the least popular Neheb, where yeah. it's like it goes ahead if it deals damage, you can go ahead. Discard your hand. Discard your hand, and from, for each one yeah. you do, mm -hmm. you get another card as a replacement. So this is kind of a similar effect. It's refined in a different way. And also, yeah. I like how this isn't forcing a tribal strategy, because like typically we see it's like whenever a goblin does this, or like a human does yeah. this. And the fact that this is just blanket creature, it doesn't matter if it's a token or creature or whatever, and it just you get the effect, it's really good. Because typically they they try to make these effects a lot harder to get off back in the day. So it seems like they're kind of embracing change a little bit. And yeah, yeah I'm thrilled. I would not want to play against this, uh, <laughs> but it would be a very powerful deck and a budget deck you can make too. Yeah, I'm not sure how viable it is, but I'm eager to try it out. And there's I'll a whole bunch that. of cards in red where it's like, all right, create two like elemental tokens, create two goblin tokens and stuff like that. Or yeah. anything out there, it's like, go ahead, you tap this. Like Cranko is a great example. You just tap it, create as many tokens as you want. It, it really feeds into a lot of like different builds you can go. And like the creative avenues on this are probably pretty vast. And you gotta love Agreed. something like that. Yeah, open new cards, love it. So moving on to my number one card. This is pretty much how I form my sentences. It's a card called Discontinuity. <laughs> it costs six mana, three generic, and triple back black. Like Yeah, right there. Blue, you mean. The, a lot of... <laughs> exactly like I said. It's, it really, yeah. I can't talk. Um, it's an instant that is a mythic from this set. And it reads... Should I just, even just restart the card over? No, Go probably ahead. not. All right, as long as this, uh, you cast this card on... As long as you cast this spell on it's your turn, it, the cost is reduced by four, two generic and two blue. So that means the end result of this is going to be only two mana, one generic, and an island, which is cool. And what do you get with that effect? You end the turn. 
Now that sounds pretty simple and not so hypey, but here, let's bring the card up for one more second because there's a lot of little tail text of what that does. Hmm. So pretty much you would go ahead and you would exile all spells and abilities that are on the stack. And that includes this card. So pretty much, oh, then whatever whoever's player's turn is, they would go ahead, they discard their hand down to the maximum hand size that they're allot allotted. All damage wears off pretty much. And then all the end turn effects also wear off. Now, you are typically probably seeing this kind of effect on a card like Sundial of the Infinite. That's usually the most notorious people right. use. But this card here does a lot of things in such a small, simple way. And the more you look into it, the better its reach. If you think about this, this is a card that's a counterspell that is kind of non-respondable because they don't want to go ahead and add to the stack with this thing because the, all those cards will be getting exiled. So that means somebody goes ahead and they try to play a Cyclonic Rift and you play this. Cyclonic Rift never goes off and it's exiled, mm. making it so it's a better form of removal, which typically blue doesn't have. Typically, they just used to doing counter spells, but also the turn ends. So whenever you go ahead and you use this, that turn ends and it's the next player. So if you're doing 1v1, it's almost like an extra turn card. Well, exactly. And that's why when I was like initially trying to describe this card, it's like Time Stop, Counterspell, and Time Warp all had a baby, and that's this card. Well, so, yeah. yeah, you can use it, and like you were saying, Stu, you can use it on your turn for some shenanigans like you could with a Sundial of the Infinite. I think you're missing Summary Dismissal, because that, that'd be the last little bit you'd have to put in there. Well, to, yeah. Because, like, the whole that, yeah, clearing that out the stack thing. Too. But yeah, um, and it's kind of got split second too, almost, if you think about it. Because you don't really want to do much against this. Right. Yeah. So, and like, yeah, like I was saying, uh, on your turn, it's a cool, another access to Sundial the Infinite type of effect. And some decks can use that, some can't. Not every can. Yeah, but on the other hand, it is, you know, ending other people's turns. It is pretty much like a, a three, uh, I mean, three mana, six mana, six <laughs> mana time warp. So, and, is, and as history has proven, six mana extra turn well, spells stop. are still very viable. So that's perfectly, that's perfectly relevant as well. However, unlike a time warp, this is not nearly as good in a multiplayer game. Yeah, no, like it, well, it's definitely, it's a, it's a six mana time stop for certain. Because even if it isn't your turn, it's just going to flat out end the turn right there. And it could be potentially an extra turn, but also being able to completely hose somebody who's going off. Like, if they're getting some sort of infinite combo off right there, it stops it completely, which is very powerful. And how many times you're like, I need an answer, but the counter spell I had doesn't stop triggered abilities, or it only stops activated abilities. I don't have something to stop the cast. This takes care of all of that right there. And, I mean, I'm not even a control player in that regard and this is a card i think that definitely should be taken note of it's going to be a powerhouse well i don't know we'll see i guess it'll be interesting to see if this can actually make waves somewhere oh it can it, whether it's in a baby pool or the you know it's adult swim <laughs> we're all kicking all the kids out super competitive meta kind i think it's definitely viable well, speaking of competitive, I think this my next card here maybe takes the cake in that regard from this entire set. When do we get cake? Oh, later. Later. Ooh, like number so number one for this set is, in my opinion anyway, Terror of the Peaks. Yeah, way worse. Take it uh, off the screen. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, this is a five mana dragon. This is a five four with flying. Spells your opponent's cast that target it cost an additional three life to cast. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. So, well, let's just let's just think about what this is for a minute. This is a Warstorm Surge, which is a pretty good card. Fringe playable, not super amazing, but still pretty good in some. What's well, a lower costed one? So, not only not only that, it costs one mana less. It's on a five four flying body is a dragon, which is extremely relevant if you play this game at all. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, it, yeah, and it does this Warstorm Surge ability for any other creature that enters the battlefield. Oh, right, you're playing dragons. You're playing things that are going to hit for massive damage every time it comes down. And even if you're not, why would you not play this in a deck that had giant creatures in it? 
Like seriously, this is ridiculous. Well, you don't even need giant creatures. You just need like a plethora of creatures coming out. And actually, who's the? I think it's not Koth. It's um, what's his name? The dragon where it goes ahead and takes the ability of a dragon from your deck. It's, Scion of the Ur Dragon. Scion yeah. of the Ur Dragon. That could be something really yeah. dumb with this. My point is, this card is completely and utterly nuts. And the only reason that this is probably not going to make a lot of waves in standard or modern or anywhere like that is because it doesn't have haste. <laughs> That, that's the bottom line. That's the only reason. I love really. what makes stuff bad in those formats and what doesn't make stuff bad in Commander. Well, pretty uh. much, it, it's generally agreed right now that anything that like anything that doesn't have haste or any TB trigger is bad. So th th this doesn't trigger on itself. Well, yeah, which it, is a shame. Well, you know? so this is doing. If we break this down, it's pretty much doing what red does, and red has no problem dishing damage out to whatever target it wants. It can hit players, it can hit creatures, it can hit planeswalkers, and this is adding that effect right. on. But it can be continuous, and that's really, really good there. So it almost is you'd think a win more card again. Like this is only something that can like if I'm already going to win, this is just going to help me win. Or it will just straight up win. <laughs> the but that's end. the thing. It can be. Used to make certain infinite combos viable like if you're doing going ahead and you're doing like the whole kiki jiki hmm. zealous constructs kind of thing well you put this out there you don't even have to have that attack step to do it you just go ahead this you play this out you just blow up the board exactly. so it's, it's something that can be a tech tool for certain combos or a way just to hold back the fort like this is good like you said as a warstorm surge yeah. would be like and yeah it's a, it's a creature version of warstorm surge oh and i forgot to mention you can't kill it <laughs> unless you want to pay three life every time you want to target well, no, it with you, something. You, good luck. <laughs> you can do that, but uh, and the good thing is also it's your opponents. Like it, like you can't just go ahead and equip this with like a lightning grease and you're like, all right, I got to pay three life. That sinks. It's strictly yeah. your opponents, which is great for that. But it's I, you totally lost my train of thought on that one. <laughs> but no, it, it's tutorable because there actually are tutor spells for dragons, oh, which yeah. being in mono red, there's not a lot of tutorability in there. Like you can play gamble, sure. But you might lose it, and that's going to hurt. But for dragons, there's plenty of it. And this also, this can work in tribal builds. And just a reminder, sneak attack's a thing. You can go ahead, play this out for one mana, and then go ahead and go off like crazy. So you can even do this at somebody else's turn, wipe them out of the game instantly, or just take care of all their problem permanents right there, which is great. Yeah, honestly, I think we got a new red staple on our hands with this card. I don't know about red staple, but it's definitely something that would see, again, certain decks that love making t tokens, or they have combos where they go ahead and they make little crazy tricks. It's definitely going to be a little bit more on the competitive side of a, of a card. I, I agree. Just, uh, I just wish it was Legend, though. Wouldn't this be so cool to have as a commander? I think oh that's a, God, that's that a horrible wish. Oh, it would be so great. Like, I would wish for like Whatever. a lifetime <laughs> supply of french fries. Way better. <laughs> Way better than that being Legendary. But I don't have anything else. Oh, the last thing I would say about this is that the good thing about this, too, is you can also kill Planeswalkers without having to worry about attacks. Because sometimes there are Planeswalkers out there that you just need to kill instantly. Right. And just by going ahead and casting a creature out, which is another value engine, and spot removal that, that feels good. That feels nice. Yeah. So these are some really cool cards we looked at today. Overall, Stu, I mean, we've seen the majority of the spoilers at this point. What do you Pretty think much. of the set in general? I I like it. I, I think they're taking some creative avenues for it, which is always refreshing, as opposed to just seeing them reprint, like, a Steel Hellkite again or something <laughs> like that or something. Like, like that dragon could have just easily had, like, fire-breathing effects and nothing more. And, like, we've seen so many dragons with that and been like, yay. Yeah. <laughs> Not anything I care about. But this one, I've... And also... I didn't choose it, but Grim Tutor is getting mm. reprinted in this set, and that's just something yeah. to take note of. We've seen Vampiric Man. Tutor get reprinted, and that's already at about a hundred bucks. Yeah. So Azusa Massacre Worm. There's some really good reprints coming out. This, in this is set. for them saying they were never going to do a core set again. This is great <laughs> at them uh, being like, all right, we learned our lesson. Yes, I think they're yeah, I think they're doing gradually better. And like you said, I like how they're kind of pushing the envelope on on uh, color pie and and abilities wise, but. Yeah, I was I was a little disappointed by as a commander player, you know, how few new cool legends there were. But you like the one at least. Oh yeah, the one is very yeah, the red one is very good. But overall, I don't know. I, I was kinda met about this set. There are some really cool cards and there's some great reprints, but overall, I don't know, it's like a it's like a B for me. Probably like a solid B, maybe B minus. I'd say B plus close to an A minus for that. Because I mean also we are getting some Phenomenal Alter Art, Assam Simulacrum, <laughs> and that looks so cool. That's true, too. But 
that's going to end up our magic moment here today. Uh, be sure to check us out on all of our forms of social media. You can reach us on our own subreddit or Reddit in general. We have our decks that we love to play on Tapped Out that we're always updating. We have our Facebook. We have Twitter. Pretty much if you're on any kind of social media, just type in the card pool and you'll probably find us. And even podcasts for that amount. Indeed, and we are also proud to be affiliated with TCG Player. Yep, we have our own affiliate link down in the description below. So if you are going to buy any of these cards from this set or any cards in general, make sure once your shopping cart is full, click on the link beforehand and lets them know that, hey, you watch what we do, and that also means something to them. So it helps them help our channel, which is great. And as always, we greatly appreciate it. So I guess that wraps it up for now. I'm Kyle. He's Kyle, and I'm Stu, and we'll see you, <laughs> see you next, next time, time at, at the, the card pool. pool. It's, I love how we can actually do that now that we're sitting next to I know, other. and this way I can prove that you messed it up. It's <laughs> way easier. <laughs> yeah.